y'all welcome back this is gonna be another get out and fish bait making video uh, I hope y'all enjoyed that little intro I got a little gratuitous on y'all but I hope y'all didn't mind I uh, attended a uh, crappie tournament uh, last weekend and they they asked me to uh, play the national anthem I was honored to accept and do it for them and it was awesome I had a great time and uh, was super happy to do that. And I guess uh, word has gotten out from some other places, and I'm starting to feel the uh, the requests coming in to do that. I'm not going to be able to play a lot of them because I just don't have time. But anyway, thank you all for uh, watching that, and uh, thank you all for tuning in to this one. So today, I, um, I want to do not exactly a how-to beginner's video because there's already lots of great... Uh, YouTube videos out there on that topic, but this is more of a, maybe an explainer video because um, in the the Facebook groups for self plastic bait making, I see the same questions kind of popping up all the time, and um, they uh, for some reason they end up getting heated, and I just I just don't like to participate in in those conversations. I have my answers, and uh, I'm going to show you them here some of the big questions that I see. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. But real quick, before we get into the my uh, tips and tricks and your questions answered video, I want to get some uh, announcements out of the way. So uh, a lot of my viewers and my customers know, if you don't, I'm, you're about to. In a couple months, I am retiring from the Air Force. So big life change. Um, my wife has recently accepted a position that's going to relocate us to San Diego, California. Um, while I'm not totally excited to be moving to California, I am excited about the fishing opportunities that await me out there. So that is going to be exciting. Uh, with that, in the next month... I'm going to be shutting down my website for a couple months so I can focus on my uh, finishing out my career. I got to move two houses. I got to sell one of them and then uh, relocate to San Diego. So I don't know. It could be a few months till I can uh, start the site back up. But, um, yeah, they got that coming up. I'm going to keep making YouTube videos whenever I get a chance, though. 
and uh, I really enjoy doing this and um, all the comments are great and hearing people say that that the videos helped them out is uh, truly rewarding so I'm gonna keep doing these but mentioning my YouTube channel um, I'm creeping up on 500 subscribers it only took geez it's been a little over a year now I was hoping to be a thousand now but I'm just as excited to be hitting 500 pretty soon it's still probably a month or so off, but um, uh, I'm excited. And uh, as a, as a uh, thank you, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And um, I have uh, looked at my uh, viewer data, and most of my viewers are bait makers. Uh, if you're a bait maker, you're probably also a fisherman. But most of the people who come to my videos, most, my highest views are for bait making content. So... With that being said, my 500 uh, subscriber giveaway is going to be this uh, Fat Guys Fishing 5-inch stick bait with the uh, matching tip mold that goes with it. Um, I, I bought these with the intention of uh, having them on my website, but I just can't get anyone to buy my sick worms. Um, I don't know if it's just an area thing. I think it's mostly people are loyal to Gary Yamamoto, which I can't blame them. It's a great bait. But uh, this is what they look like. It's just your regular old 5-inch stick bait. And there, I, I showed this bait because it has the tip on it. And uh, they look really good. I loaded them, I load them up with salt. and Yeah, they're, they're good, decent stick worms. But this will be the prize I'm giving away for 500 subscribers. We're looking at about a $350 retail value on these, so, um, yeah, I need, I need a few more subscribers before I can get there, though, but this will be going to someone, some lucky subscriber who comments on that video whenever it comes, but hopefully this gets y'all excited to watch. All right, with all that being said and out of the way, let's get on to some tips and tricks and some questions answered. All right, we're back, y'all. Um... Plastic. This is the meat and potatoes of this whole hobby industry. The plastic. So, the big questions I see on the Facebook groups is, why is my plastic all runny? I got it up to 350 degrees. You, you have to understand that this is two parts. There's a resin, right? It's heavier than the other part where I think it's just some kind of uh, oil, oil-based plasticizer. It's got a resin in it. The resin, if left unattended over time, it's gonna, the resin's just gonna fall down to the bottom. You want that resin equally distributed amongst everything in this bucket, all right? You, so, I mean, get some kind of uh, stirring mechanism. I have a drill with one of these little stirring apparatuses I bought off of, uh, Amazon for like 10 bucks or something and I just I stir I do it that way and I also stir stir I want to make sure I can't if you can actually feel it it clumps up and it'll get kind of cushiony on the bottom you want to get all that stuff up and in the this uh, plastic you want it all mixed up really well I've never heard of anyone having a bad day because they mix their plastic too much all right you could sit here and stir it for uh, like five minutes straight and uh, it still not be ready. So give it a good stir. If you're, if you're using it daily and um, you're stirring it every day, you might not have to spend five minutes. But if you've gone away on vacation and come home, you might need to give it a good long stir. So do not neglect stirring. That's the poly, poly solves. 50% of all the questions people ask on the Facebook groups. Just stir the crap out of it. Stir, stir. I'm done stirring. I'm tired of stirring. Stir it another minute. You can't stir this enough. No one ever had a bad day over stirring their plastic. All right. Now that our plastic is good and stirred, we are going to heat some plastic up. I have a little one cup... Uh, Pyrex cup. It's actually not a Pyrex cup. It is the generic Walmart Anchor Anchor Hawking 
that's all I've ever used. I've never went and got the Pyrex cups. I've just had these. They work. They've I've, they've lasted me since I started doing this, and I've only acquired more. Um, but we're gonna heat this uh, plastic up. Uh, to do this, you need the cup. Obviously, you need some plastic. I have a half cup of plastic in there, right at the line, a half cup. We are also going to need some gloves. Got my gloves. We. What else are we gonna need? We are going to need our respirator. I don't wear my respirator on the videos just because you wouldn't be able to hear me talk, but every company that sells plastic recommends wearing one. I got this, it's a 3M something or other. I got, there's the, the model number. Uh, it's a 3M5103, 5203, I don't know. You can find, it comes right up, I just Googled respirators, and it seems to be what everyone else is using as well. But I wear that whenever I'm not recording videos. I swear all my, uh, I think all my neighbors believe I'm in here making drugs or something, because I'm always walking around with this respirator and gloves on. Um, but yes, every company that makes plastic recommends using one. Amazon, I, got, I think they got that with the filters for like 30 bucks shipped, so they're not super expensive. And optional, things that are optional are, well, uh, a vacuum chamber, uh, some way to degas the plastic after it heats up. Uh, some people swear you have to have one. Some people are just, people like, in any kind of hobby or anything, there's hills that, these, that people like to die on. I, I, I'm not one of those. That's why I'm doing this video rather than answering questions on, on the groups because I, I just don't want to participate in those those unpleasant conversations. Um, I use a vacuum chamber and I degas my plastic. Is it absolutely necessary? Well, this is dead on plastic and I love it. It's one, I, I've, I started off with this brand and uh, I have no reason to, to not use it. I also use bait plastics for other applications, but for uh, pouring open pour molds, dead on swim bait, dead on worm, dead on uh, crawl tube is my favorite to use. However, I have never received any plastic from dead on it that did not bubble up after its first heating in the microwave. I do have to, I, I have to vacuum this or it will not, it will not look good. So, I highly recommend investing in a vacuum chamber. Uh, I got mine from Bait Plastics uh, right when I first started. It was about 200 bucks, but uh, I've gotten that plus some out of it. All right, so let's uh, take this plastic over to the microwave. But I want you to realize, before we get heated, it is right at a half cup. Right at the half cup one. Let's... Uh, I'm going to disconnect my, uh, my GoPro and run over to the microwave. All right, we're back, y'all. Uh, I just want you guys to see I got two microwaves here. They're both the exact same model. I bought them at Walmart for like $50 a piece. And uh, it helps me out a lot when I'm doing laminates or when I'm doing multiple orders. But... Uh, I don't, there's no there's no re, there's no industry standard microwave. Just get a microwave that that is cheap and heats up heats up your plastic. So for me, for uh, I'm in Las Vegas. I have a different altitude, different atmospheric pressure, different everything from everyone else. So the results may vary. People don't take this into account when they get into these Facebook uh, arguments. Hot liquid behaves differently at different atmospheric pressures. That's just the way the universe works. So, for me, I have this 700 watt microwave. I take a half a cup plastic. Two minutes should be a good first run in the microwave. And as you watch, you should be able to see the, the white plastisol getting clearer and clearer as it cooks in the microwave. And we'll be right back whenever it gets to the last few seconds. Eight seconds left. Can you tell it's getting a little clear in there? All right, that was two minutes. Now it looks completely clear. 
You can see a good amount of bubbles are in there. But now, what was the point of heating it up? You have to get plastic. You have to get Plastisol. I've never seen a brand that didn't require you to get 350 degrees initial heating. At 350 degrees, that liquid takes a, it makes a complete chemical change and it turns into a whole another product. So, do we just take the temperature and be like, oh, it's hot enough. Ooh, 432, that was way hot. That's not the true temperature though. That's the temperature of the top. You have to stir it, then take the temperature. Now, 342. Let's put it in for a few more seconds. So, the argument people get into a lot is whether or not the digital thermometer, the infrared thermometer, is suitable, or do you need an actual old school grandma's checking your temperature thermometer to stick in the plastic. I've used this since I began. I haven't had an issue. Um, I don't, I don't live and die by its readings, but it, uh, I've never had an issue with my plastic being too cold or anything like that. All right, let's check the temperature. There we go. Now I know it's about done because it really bubbled up. So I don't want to take the temperature yet. I need to stir it. You need to get in an even even amount in that uh, cup stirred in to get a, a, a true temperature. How is that not 350 yet? There we go. Give it a little stir. I'm probably going to put it in for a few more seconds. I usually like to see 360 indicated, that way I'm double sure. But that's how we uh, heat up our plastic. You have to stir it before you take the temperature with the thermometer, or else it's not going to be uh, reliable. Now, one more thing I want you to notice is it was right at a half a cup whenever we started. It was, well, it was just, just below that line. Now it's kind of over the line. Whenever this stuff heats up, it also expands. And that's going to come into play later whenever we go to shoot a bait. All right. Let me uh, get everything ready, and we're going to throw this in the vacuum chamber. Be right back. All right. We are over here at the vacuum chamber, and we are going to take out these bubbles. Now, bubbles come in... They come in multiple forms. The bubbles that you get from moisture, these are what these little micro bubbles. Those are the bubbles we're talking about getting rid of. Um, sometimes people will have bubbles in their baits that did not come from uh, actual moisture bubbles or whatever those little micro bubbles are. They were a result of how they shot it. They shot. It, they probably shot it too fast or whatever. Bubbles come in multiple types. These are the ones we're trying to get, up, get rid of right now. And uh, the vacuum chamber will uh, help us with that. So, I got half a cu cup of plastic. I'm gonna throw it in there, in the pot. I got the uh, vacuum lid connected. I gotta close up the valve. And I don't know how well you can see in here, but this dial, I know well, let's just, let's just look at the plastic. I, I usually use this as a guide to know when to start looking at it, but we're gonna look at that plastic in there, if you can see it, you can see it pretty well. I washed, I washed this just for this occasion because it's usually pretty dirty. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it on, and you're gonna see the bubbles rise. I have one hand on my button to turn it off because it will come up to the top and try to overflow. See where the dial's at? When it gets past that 25, that negative 25, I'll know. It's starting to bubble up. See how those bubbles are getting bigger? A 
what's gonna happen is it's eventually gonna break and it kind of like caves in on itself. There, it kind of caved in. And now you're gonna see it continue to bubble. Those aren't air bubbles, that's just, it's kind of like boiling water. It's like boiling because there's nowhere for the heat to go. There'll be a point where it still looks like it, there's bubbles in it because it, because it's boiling on the top, but you've actually sucked out all the, the micro bubbles that we're trying to get rid of. Those little bubbles that are coming to the top now, that's not, the, that's the effect I was talking about. I would wager that the, most of the, uh, the micro air bubbles are pretty much gone now. But you gotta remember, I shut it off. I'm gonna open up the uh, release valve, but you don't want to just flip it all the way off. You want it to grad be gradual. That hot plastic will spray everywhere if you open this lever too fast. We have a beautiful bubbleless cup of plastic. Now we got some res remnants of the bubbles that were in there uh, along the side. Those are fine. They'll cook out. I'm going to put color in and we're going to mix it up and then we're going to shoot it real quick. We will be right back. All right, we're back. Let's uh, recap. So first things first, stir your plastic very well. Stir, stir, stir. Pop it in the microwave. Make it small increments to get it up to 350 degrees. Make sure it is 350 degrees throughout the cup of plastic, not just on the top. You have to give it a good stir, then take the temperature. All right. If you don't, if you don't stir it well, if you don't get it to 350 degrees, and uh, you shoot this plastic, it will be a runny, gooey mess that doesn't want to set up. Uh, and it, the very first time I ever shot a mold, I did exactly the opposite of what I'm telling you now. And I took it, I thought I'd never get that mold cleaned up because it just, uh, would not come off. It was sticky, gooey, ugh, it was awful. So make sure you comply with all those steps. If you have a vacuum chamber, throw it in the vacuum chamber, keep an eye on it. It's going to want to bubble up over the top. Whenever it breaks, it'll cave in on itself. Those bubbles, they'll cave in on themselves. That's when you know you're you're pretty much got all the air out. And it's going to give you a little uh, um, ring around the cup of bubbles and old bubbles and plastic. That, that, that stuff's going to be fine. All right, so now color. Let's talk color. Whenever you first start getting into this, your first instinct is to... See, I want to make this a, uh, a lime, some kind of lime. Here's a, here's a lime color. Your first instinct, and I promise you, I still have to fight it too. I am a less is more guy. I really am. But I love my baits that come out looking deceivingly saturated, but they're not. I like the light to play with my colors. What you want to do is build color, all right? But what we all have to fight, that urge to open this bottle of plastic and try to fit two cups of colorant into half a cup of plastic. It's a hard, it's a hard one to fight. And you, once you overcome it, your colors will start looking really cool and the, they'll start playing with each other. The colors will start playing with light and then with each other and then they just, it'll look magical. But you want to build color, not force it. All right. If I could, if I could uh, stress anything, that's my philosophy. Some guys out there, that's what they're going for. They just want an opaque, bright, chalky, melted crayon looking color, and they're selling them, and people are happy. Their customers are happy with them. Great. Or if he's just making them as a hobby, do what you do. I, I, I mean, I have no problem with it. Not, it's none of my business what other people do with their colors and their plastic. But if you are looking to really kind of make your bait stand out. You want people to take notice of your work and your uh, efforts. 
build color. I'm not saying put two drops and call it good. I'm saying build it up. Don't force it. People, people have the tendency to force the color that they want. Look at all this stuff. There's no reason to force color. I have all these tools at, my, at our disposal. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and buy, I mean, that's a lot of colorant up there and a lot of uh, powders and um, glitters and stuff like that. I'm not saying you have to get all that, but use what you do have wisely, all right? And what I mean by that is put a few drops in, give it a stir. Oh, this is already setting up. I need to get this back in the microwave. How does that look? That's pretty, that's pretty translucent. Well, all right, let's add a couple more uh, drops. About the same amount I added originally. Let's give that a stir. It's hard to do this while I'm home, holding the camera, so that's why the cup's spinning. Maybe a little more. Who knows? But see, this is building color. Forcing color is just just throwing color until you're till you don't even need to stir it. Look at that. That is that is too much. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's no way that that'll look good. There's certain cases where I go really opaque. If I'm drizzling stuff on uh, the side of a mold or I'm trying to accent something, then there's time to do it. Capsuling, I do it. That's all pretty advanced, like other stuff. I'm just trying to get the questions answered. But uh, the color, you want to build it up and then let it play with the other colors, let it play with the light. Um, you'll be much happier with how your baits turn out if you build a color. All right, let me, let me get this in the microwave and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. We got that chart lime nice and uh, heated back up. It's back and liquidy. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and inject it. So to do this, what you're gonna need, you're gonna need your glove. Um, you're gonna need a mold. And I have a mold over here that I chose for this. And this is another one of the, the uh, topics that people tend to get fired up over on online. I don't understand why. I have my mold right here that I'm going to shoot. I have it on my my uh, griddle. It's heating up. And I, I don't want to, I don't, really don't want to use the word heat. It's warming up. We'll put it that way. I'm just putting it on here to take the chill off. I, in Las Vegas, at my altitude, my atmospheric pressure, my climate, I've get, gotten better results if I just warm it up like this is this isn't hot I can I can touch it it's just not chilled like I just took it out of the refrigerator all these other molds that have been sitting up here on my on my desk they are pretty chilly to touch now it's warming up here pretty soon and when it hits summer I won't even have to do that but now that it's still it's still pretty chilly out I kind of got I just warm it up because what here's what happens that plastic that we heated up in the microwave, it expanded because it, when everything's heat up, they expand. What's going to happen is if you put this hot plastic into a cold, ice cold mold, here in my in my situation here in Vegas in my garage, if I put this plastic into a cold mold, it's going to shrink. It wants to come in. As soon as it cools down, it's going to go right back down to its original size. So we're trying to find a happy medium between this hot plastic and this cold aluminum that it's about to venture into. So what works for me? I don't claim to be an expert on all of this. What works for me, I put this on the, on the warming plate for a few minutes. It's nice and warm. I can tell it, I can tell it's not cold. I took it, I can tell it's warmer than this over here. I'm going to get this t this plastic. I like to shoot it right around 310, 300. All right? 300 degrees to 310 degrees. I like this to just not be cold. I do the same thing with my injector. I just, it's not hot. I, I think what people are missing or saying is they, they're saying they heat it up like they do open pour aluminum molds whenever heat is really important when you're doing that. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you've, you know that. 
We're not talking that kind of heat. We're just talking taking the chill off of the mold. That's all we're doing. And I think that that is uh, misunderstood on the Facebook groups. And again, I just don't I just don't get involved. The, I'm not willing to die on any of those hills because someone else on the other side of the country with different different climate, different everything is probably going to have a different result. So, I need to clamp this mold up. Just got some regular old Amazon clamps. All right, let's take a temperature on this guy. It should be good and cold because it's been out of the microwave for a few minutes. I'm gonna have to put it back in for a few. But you notice how I'm swirling it up when I'm taking the temperature. I'm not trying to get the top, of just the top of the plastic. I wanna get a good reading of the whole thing as a whole. So I'm trying to swirl it up, get everything mixed up as I take the temperature. And I'm looking for 300, 305, 310, somewhere in that area. Uh, and I'm going to shoot it into this mold. Give it a stir. Anytime it comes out of the microwave, just give it a stir. You don't have to beat it like uh, omelets in the morning or anything, but uh, give it a quick little stir with the knife or whatever you use. 320, I can, I can look at that. Got my injector fresh off the griddle, and it's not hot, it's just warmed up. Draw up a good little amount. I'm going to get it right over the gate, or the, the sprue. Push the plunger down, and I'm going to hold pressure. Alright. Take it off, and it... What it's going to do, it's evident that this is going to contract because you can see that sprue right there. You can see it's starting to, it's starting to suck in on itself. That is this plastic cooling down and contracting. All you have to do is whenever it draws in too much, if you have really hot plastic and a right off the shelf mold, that's good and chilled, it's gonna draw in a lot. And that's what that's how people get air in their baits. Because it's gonna draw in so much, it's gonna start drawing into the, uh, the actual uh, cavities. This, we're gonna be fine just the way it is. Because I try to get the temperatures, I try to find a happy medium for me. I don't know what, what the, the situation would be if I was in Wisconsin and it was, I was up north and it was cold. I'd have to find something else. Or if I was on the equator, the situation might be different. But for me, here in Las Vegas, this is how I do it. And if those little, those simple little uh, uh, facts about plastic, about heat and cold, keeping those in mind, you can, it, it, become, it starts to become intuitive. You don't want super hot plastic hitting something cold. If you do, it's going to draw in. You have to just, if it starts to draw, you just fill the hole back up with plastic. But that's also how you get those dents that everyone talks about. You don't want it to go from super hot to cold immediately. You want it to gradually get there. You want it to contract uniformly as it cools. All right, so we'll be right back when this is ready to open up and we'll see these really opaque uh, shark lime baits. All right, let's see if we got a successful injection going on here. So this bait, I believe, is my three-inch fluke. And it actually might look pretty cool with that straight uh, chart lime opaque color. Let's take a gander. All right, looks like everything everything filled properly. That's another thing. If, if your molds are too cold, sometimes with these little extremities, they, they'll stop, like, too short because it, it set up too quick before it could get there. So just taking the chill off will uh, probably uh, take care of those issues if you're having them. But this looks like it turned out great. I actually might just use these. But no dents, 
everything filled and uh, yeah it looks like a good bait I'll go catch some crappie on these next weekend hopefully but yeah alright that's it for color injection and plastic let's move on to some other stuff alright y'all we are back so let's talk about some other stuff that uh, I don't know that gets people in trouble on the Facebook I wouldn't say in trouble but starts another like yakety yak back and forth about stuff that really isn't that big a deal uh, people they go on Facebook and ask the questions that are it's obvious you put zero effort into finding the answer um, the the uh, amount of information and the YouTube videos that are available and uh, some of these questions are, are just like some kind of, I can I can see where people get frustrated I try to help whenever I can but I can see where people get frustrated because they'll ask a simple question, uh, where do I buy lures or, or where do I buy molds? <laughs> um, <laughs> come on now, Google, it's your friend. Go ahead and Google it. Uh, look, a, try and uh, t type in soft plastics on YouTube or uh, there's plenty of ways to get the answer. At least make it look like you put an effort into it. Um, some guys say, hey, I want to get into soft plastics. What do I do? I can see why people get frustrated when people ask these questions because it seems it you probably could have found the answer yourself out. But th these are bait maker groups that are designed to help people. So we should be encouraging people with those questions. Hey, I got you. Come uh, send me a PM and I'll, I'll get put you in the right direction. Um, I will put a link or a bunch of links in my in the description if you're brand new and you're looking to get into. Uh, bait making in the description I'm going to post all the links of stores I go to all the time to buy molds colorant glitter I almost have a different place for everything I like some glitters from one place I like some highlight powders from another place and colorant and plastic and molds it, there's a lot of places you can uh, it, this is a rabbit hole you can go way into so I will post uh, a bunch of those links in the description below uh, another common question I see is, hey, I'm just getting started in uh, soft plastics. What colors should I buy? Now, I can see why that would be a question someone that's brand new would ask. But it's a pretty, it, for someone who, who uh, is already in this and has been making baits, that's a pretty vague question. Are you making swim baits? Because that'll take you down one path. Are you making, um, j uh, like, I don't know, worms? Uh, drop shot worms or are you making crappie crappie plastics you kind of have to have, kind of throw that context in there we need to know because th there's different colors for different things just think about what if you're going crappie fishing what colors are you going to go get maybe you should start there um hey i'm going to go bass fishing i want i want to throw some cinco's well what kind of cinco's what color cinco's do you like to throw get get those colors um for me I, I, if I see a color that I don't have, I try to get my hands on it. If you couldn't tell from my uh, collection up there, but uh, really, if I were to if I were to just answer that bare bones question, no content, uh, I someone just I want to get into soft plastics. What colors should I get? This would be my choice, and I have to look for them because I'm just now thinking of this. Um, there's one. There's two. Um, there's three. There's no not particular order. These are just coming to mind. I need five colors to get me by. Let's see. What else is absolutely important? You can tell how much I use this one because it's almost gone. That's a that's a must have for me. Uh, let's just go with these five. Um, for me, how I do things, uh, these, oh, and you gotta have, you gotta have a black. Get you a black. Just have it. Uh, probably the most, like, you can make so many great baits with just, this is, uh, Green Pumpkin Green from, uh, MF Manufacturing. I will have that, that, that'll definitely be posted in my description below. I have to have that color. That's my, that's my Green Pumpkin color. 
it's my favorite green pumpkin. Everyone has their own little, uh, there's all lots of different green pumpkins out there. Uh, this is mine. That's the one I like. And uh, let's see, uh, this Thalo Blue, just amazing. I, uh, I use this as, as often as I can. This is the only chartreuse I use. I've never seen another chartreuse that is as bright and brilliant and just as, just as short. This is the definition of chartreuse, in my opinion. Dead on. I've said it in a lot of my other videos. This is my favorite. Dead on chartreuse. This dead on uh, neo pink. For a neon, bright neon, con uh, concentrated color, it's actually pretty versatile. I use that in a lot of stuff you wouldn't expect. Um, this by Dead On, Snowshine. I mean, talk about a shad belly. Uh, it's just beautiful. Um, you can tell I, I need to get another bottle pretty soon. I think I got another one up there, but this is almost gone. I use it so much. Uh, those are the bare basic bones colors I would try. But if, you, if you're able and you can afford it, I would just buy... I like to have all the tools in my toolbox that I could possibly need. So I'm, I buy color that I don't even have a plan to use. I just, I want to have it. Whenever inspiration strikes, I can be like, oh, let me, I bet that ox blood will work. Or that new uh, cinnamon I haven't tried yet will, uh, will work. Or I, 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 I would wager there's probably 20 bottles up here that haven't been opened, at least. <laughs> so there, there's the colors I, uh, I just... Uh, I have to have them all. It's it's kind of a sickness. But look, I don't have any kids. Uh, what else am I gonna buy? I could be I could be spending my money on way worse stuff. All right. And so, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. Another question I see a lot is uh, what's the difference between pearl powder and highlight powder? Ooh, that's actually a pretty good question. So let me get a pearl powder. Let me get a highlight. Actually, this is my like my favorite highlight too. Um, pearl powders. So pearl powders are just powdered pigment. This is this is used to color plastic. You're going to use this pa this powder to actually make the color of that plastic blue. But the reason we have it pearlized instead of just using the stalo blue is because it gives it a nice little rich uh, pearl texture which uh, it there's times whenever I want a pearl, nice pearl texture. There's times when I just want the phthalo blue. Half the time I use these in conjunction with each other. Uh, uh, but the just know that the pearl powder is actually there to color the plastic. You want it to make it that, that blue color. Now, highlight on the other hand. Highlight doesn't necessarily color the powder. I'm trying to see if I have something over here that is highlight. Here we go. So this is uh, Beauregard. It's it's a highlight. A highlight. Uh, let me see where is it. Here it is. It's a highlight. It's got warm oil and it's got some high, the highlight powder in it. Or it's already it's just ready to go in liquid form. But highlight all it does and this will do the same thing as this, except it's a different color. Um, see how it has that red? It's not red, but whenever the light hits it right, it has that red reflection. That's what highlight does. It doesn't color this plastic red. You wouldn't say this, this, the color of this plastic is red. You would say it's white with like red highlights. I don't know. <laughs> That's the difference. The, the, this, this turquoise stuff from, uh, uh, Lurecraft, it, I, I'm glad I bought two of these cause I don't ever want to run out of it. But this turquoise highlight, oh, excellent stuff. Uh, so that that's the difference, all right? Pearl, actually, you want the pigment to turn that color. Highlight, you want it to be, it's kind of like a pearl white kind of, it's, it's not really not a color, it just kind of highlights it. That, but yeah, that's how you can, you can see right there. That's all it is. Uh, let's see, we also have other kinds of colors we can use. We have, and look how much I got left. We have hyper shifts and shifting powders. Now shifting powders, this is actually uh, ZGA from Dip Your Car. I love that place. This stuff is actually designed for car paint. 
That's why it's so outrageously expensive. This whole bag, I think, was 180 bucks. It was, at one time, it was like up to there with straight powder. But what shifting does is it's gonna, it's gonna be like like some of those new cars that had got fresh paint jobs on them. You look at it at one angle and it's blue, and then you come to the other side and it kind of shifts into purple. That's all it is. It just does that in our plastic. Um, I have some examples of those on my website, and uh, uh, you can, I've I've used uh, shifting powders a lot in my in my other videos. You can go back and look at my gizzard shad that has uh, shifting powders in it, um, and my um, hickory shad video. I used uh, hyper shift in the top, and it kind of gave it like a green to gold uh, shift. Um, yeah, that's that's what the shifts do. Now, the only thing these three have in common is the fact that they're in powder shape, in powder form. But they're completely there's three completely different uses for them. This is not a highlight, but it is a powder. It does it will color your plastic, but it shifts. This is a powder, but it doesn't color your plastic. It just gives it a highlight. This is a powder, and all it does is change it the color of what you're looking for. All right. And we got all the glitters. Um, you definitely have to have red. You have to have black. Try to have multiple sizes of each. Um, those are other ways. Some people have awesome looking baits and they, they don't use any, any powder pigment or liquid pigment at all. They just use glitter and those look really cool. Um, I would have a good variety of your basic colors of glitter, some reds, different sizes, some purples, different sizes, blacks. You want to want black, all the sizes of black you can get. <laughs> um, let's see, what's another one I use a lot? I like to put blue blue uh, flake in there sometimes. I love this uh, hologram. Uh, I don't really like the big one because I, I don't even think I've used it, but I like the, the 0 .15, 0 .015. Uh, but get all the, if you can, get all the sizes you, all, of every color you get. Don't buy a color and just get one size of it in my opinion. It, if you're going to buy a color, get all three sizes, the, the 0.06, the 0 0.035, the 0 0.015, and I even get the 0 0.08. So there's, there's some applications that I, I just want that really small, small glitter. All right. Some good tips on color there. And then the best tip I can give you about colors, no matter what colors, what glitters and what powders you have, well, anytime you're in the, the in your garage or wherever you uh, make your baits, anytime you're in there and you're making stuff, write down what you're putting in there. There's been like two or three instances I made something magical. I loved it, and I had no idea how to recreate it because I, I made it, took pictures, posted on Facebook, got all my likes, yay. And then someone was like, hey, I want to order that. And I it's like three days later, and I'm like, I have no idea what colors I used to make that. So... Write everything down. I keep a little notebook um, right here where I'm, I'm constantly taking notes and writing stuff down, all right? So this is whenever you're in the moment writing it. Now, once you've you found some colors that you like and you've got a good formula, I'm a, I'm a formula guy. I like to have the pen. I like to be able to recreate it exactly every time. Some guys um, uh, just like to go off the seat of their pants and just kind of add color here and there. I have a business. I'm trying to, I want people to get what they're seeing in the pictures on my website, you know. So I have everything written down. The best tip ever, the be, and I don't know how, I don't know how more people don't talk about this, but let's look at this app right here. It's called Recipe Keeper. I don't even think I paid for it. It might have been free. I use this. This is for cooking. I use this to keep all of my recipes in. And it, the cool thing is you can add a picture of it. Where is a recipe that I wouldn't mind giving away? Gizzard Shad. There it is. There's my, I have a picture of it so I know what it's supposed to look like. And then I have all the uh, ingredients and cup. I just type it in and we're good to go. Anytime I need to pull up a recipe that I need to make for, uh, for an order, I just pull it, pull it up right here. Sparkle Shad. I don't mind people seeing that. That's easy. And uh, I type it in words that I know I'll understand. I don't try to make it universal because I'm 
I'm a one man show. My wife isn't going to come out here and make lures for me. So, uh, I just keep it on my own. This is, uh, this was a really good app. And there was one point where I had a whole book like this full and I just came in here and started putting recipes in and then it lets you load the picture up and everything. I love it. And it even, whenever you're adding a new recipe, it even lets you like, let's say shad shad. All right ingredients it even has all these like these little uh abbreviations ready to go for you so i need to use a teaspoon of black flake boom I, I got these little abbreviations there to help you out and then you can go and you can add other notes you can add photos it'll say hey add a photo and it'll just upload it from your phone wherever one you pick so this is a great great tool that i use and I advise, I don't, if I paid anything for it, it wasn't more than five bucks and it was, it's worth its weight in gold now because th I can't remember these and I, I'm horrible with paper cause I'll, I'll forget where I put it or I'll lose this. This, this is temporary when I'm in the moment making stuff. And then whenever I like it and I, people want to buy it, I throw it in my, my recipe book on my phone. So that's a really big tip, uh, for you all to try out. So that is uh, my kind of, it wasn't an instructional how-to so much as it was just kind of filling in the gaps, answering questions I see all the time. And if anyone has any other questions about bait making that I didn't go over or I went too fast or I didn't explain something well, uh, put it in the comments and I will, I will, uh, I'll answer it. I'll tell you, I'll, or I'll say, hey, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, go watch Chris Jones. Chris Jones answers a lot of these in his videos. He pretty much, that's why I didn't want to make this like a beginner bait maker how to, because he's done two of those and those are great, but I still see questions all the time that people, I can't put an answer in there because I don't want to get in those heated debates and I'm not prepared to die on a hill, uh, with people. So it's just easier to do this. So please get with me. If you have any questions, please like, and subscribe. You got to at least like it for that uh, guitar solo at the beginning, right? Give it a like. Give it a subscribe. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. I can't wait to answer them. And tight lines.